Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and today I want to address a topic that seems to be not very well understood, and I've noticed that it's something that comes up in the community, people always bring up, people talk about, and it's this idea that in order to achieve large amounts or near maximum or maximum amounts of hypertrophy in a muscle, which is size in a muscle, that you have to work muscles through their fullest range of motion, that you have to work every function of a muscle, Every muscle has to have all of its primary functions targeted for this to happen. And the truth is, this simply isn't true. In fact, a lot of the functions that we talk about in different muscles, these things are very important for sport-specific applications. They're very important for me as a power lifter. Be very important for a strong man. They would be very important for an American football player, a rugby player, a gymnast, anyone who is weightlifting for the purpose of improving... Let me slide over here their athletic performance, things like muscle function, joint angle specificity, all of that becomes very, very important. But the truth is hypertrophy will be induced and in some people maximum hypertrophy will be induced without even directly working a muscle, let alone working all of its functions. And it's because there are many different things that induce hypertrophy and you have things like the radiant effect and you have splash over effects and all these things that people don't take into account. And a lot of these things vary based upon the individual. There are some people who will grow biceps very easily. Case in point, watch C.T. Fletcher do biceps. He is genetically gifted with his arm development. He will grow no matter what he does as long as he trains hard. If you watch him, he doesn't do any of his curls in any way that would be considered correct. But it works. It works for him and it works for a lot of the guys he's training who don't have terrible arm genetics. He does a lot of these partial reps on the preacher curl. And even when he does curls, a lot of times he doesn't come down at the bottom. He comes way up here pulling the load off the bicep. Anyone who knows physiology would say that's wrong. And yet the guy has at least 20 inch arms, probably bigger, as a 50 something year old man. And people can argue whether he's natural or not. That's besides the point. The point is... I don't care how much shit you put into your body. I don't care how many drugs you put into your body. Most of you wouldn't have arms his size at 25, let alone 55. So you can't even pin that down on drugs. It's an issue of he's genetically blessed there. He is training the muscles hard and with progressive overload for long periods of time. And therefore they grow even though he doesn't do any of those lifts correctly. Doesn't matter. Because for hypertrophy, all that matters is tension. And we've seen studies out there showing that even heavy isometric work induces very measurable amounts of hypertrophy. And when it comes to the people who have a genetic gift in an area, such as me, they'll take my calves, for example, use myself. I'm very genetically gifted in my calves. You guys have seen videos, photos of my calves. I don't train my calves. And they seem to grow from squats and deadlifts. They grow very big from squats and deadlifts without any direct work. Yet, I know people who can squat and deadlift more than me who have calves that are three or four inches smaller than me. So, it's very clear that the squat and the deadlift are not a good calf exercise. They, might, they give it some secondary stimulation. They're stabilizers, but they're not really primary movers by any means. Yet, my calves grow for them because I'm gifted in that area. Whereas, in someone else, to get proportionate calf development, might have to actually do an exercise for the gastrous anemias and an exercise for the soleus. So they would need at least two different calf movements to develop them. So this is where individual genetics come into play. But the truth is, if you're genetically gifted in a muscle and it's one of your strong points and everyone has gifts and weaknesses, you may not even need direct work at all for it to grow in development. It could be secondary exercises and it will still be a fantastic body part for you. But push come to shove, people forget that it is tension and progressive overload, correct nutrition rest, those things that will make a muscle bigger. It simply isn't necessary for anybody, actually, to work a muscle through the fullest range of motion or work every function of the muscle in order to get it to grow very quickly or at a, a very good rate. And the only time I would say most people who are not looking for sports, who just want size, need to really start spending a lot of time looking at those things is when you have a muscle that is lagging. When you have a muscle that's lagging behind your other muscles and you need to bring it up, that's when those things become critical. But the people who try to throw in exercises to hit every head of every muscle, to try to work everything, 
in the body to every function that the body has. These are the people who get these very large convoluted programs, and these are the people who make slow progress most of the time and end up spinning their wheels because they end up with programs that are too complex for their needs because they're trying to hit all of these functions because they honestly believe it's necessary for optimal growth, and the truth is it really doesn't seem to be. All right, guys, so that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it has been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time. But let me give you guys a bicep shot before I go. Mount Bicephius.